Hi, as you may have seen in some of my earlier videos or heard that uh, I've been wanting to have a scope for some time now. So I have a new package here and of course I already said it, it's a scope and um, it's not just a usual scope, it's a, it's a computer scope or USB scope, let's say. say. So uh, let's take a look at that. So this one has uh, external trigger input and then two channels. But the one I have uh, bought has only the two inputs. So yeah, I'll, I has to start somewhere. So and I don't have so much money right now. So I will uh, try this one. It's called Huntech. Yeah, let's open it. Yeah, check that out. It's certified. And then two probes. Let's take a look at that. Looks like ordinary probes with a bayonet connection. That's Norwegian. <laughs> and here's calibration. I don't know what this. Uh, yeah, there are these two. They are for marking the channels, probably. So, and uh, you can remove it, and then you have a sharp pin here. So, and when you attach, you have this hook mechanism. And here, we'll just look at that in a moment. And here's the nothing fancy. Uh, why is there two? Computer connection. Ah, probably it's because it wants power. So we'll have to look at it in the manual for that. And then let's have a look. Let's ground myself. Okay. <laughs> See here. Yeah. Yeah, there's two inputs one for one channel, and you have the test connections here. Antec. looks lovely. Here you have uh, 20 megahertz. So yeah, that's cool. It's pretty rugged and uh, it has this. If it should fall, and that's it has these uh, bumpers. That's great because um, this is supposed to be used with a laptop, so uh, it will be <laughs> thrown around probably. So yeah, and uh, also the thing about this. Uh, which is which is nice. If I decide to buy another one, I can. I think I can synchronize these two together, such that I ha get more channels via this port. So yeah. So here's the user manual. And, um, it tells you how to compensate your probes. Thing. And accessories. The specs. And uh, how do you install software for this thing? Okay, so um, seems to be something more in here. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, uh, I will get my laptop then. I don't have a CD player anymore, so. But uh, maybe I can get the software. This is not proper CD, by the way. This is just a uh, CDR. Hello again, and welcome back. And uh, I just want to give you a little update on uh, my progress on my broken C64 that I broke myself. Anyway, so uh, check this out. It's live. So, uh, I got some new equipment, here you can see uh, on the video I have a new scope, it's working quite fine and it's uh, invaluable 
it kind of sucks though, but it's not the scope's fault. Uh, I bought the cheapest one, so uh, I get what I pay for. But uh, wow, it just... Uh, it's like being blind in the electronics world without the scope, so... <laughs> okay, so what's going on here? Let's see. I will show you. It's a USB oscilloscope. It's a difficult to pronounce it. And uh, <laughs> if you duck down, you can see the green LED. But now you don't. <laughs> it's a bit boring. But yeah, you got two channel. It's uh, really poor, and it has only 48 mega samples per second. But uh, that's fine for me right now. So yeah, and. Uh, here you can see the scope on the screen, and what we are looking at here now is the um, it's a big ship actually, and uh, it's not the modulator. This is the modulator, and as you can see, it is missing parts in here. So this is coming from the wick, and this is going to the monitor, and I have desoldered parts. And here you can see my mess. <laughs> Actually, this is just prototyping, and uh, I thought my chip was broken, if you remember, uh, or if you watched the other video. So uh, I got myself a second one, and uh, actually, this is not the second one, the second one is in the other bread bin because uh, it was an older revision that I thought maybe matched the bread bin better. But the bread bin has the same revision, revision 5, as you can see there, R5, so... No, this is the microchip. <laughs> this is the wrong chip. Oh, this is the best video ever. <laughs> there it is. 1989. This one comes from the, from the bread bin. And the one I bought, I have put in the bread bin. And this is the one I extracted, anyway. So, um, they are the same, except uh, this one is 86 and this is 89, but now I have a signal, so now, uh, yeah, so maybe you wonder why, what's happening. Well, I thought I had broken the modulator somehow, but uh, now that I connected everything, I wanted to double check everything, and I was looking down here at the input ports, and, uh, well, I wasn't satisfied with that. I thought maybe, okay, maybe there's a short circuit on the back. So I used my multimeter and it said uh, <laughs> a dead short. But uh, there was a short on the other side of the board. Um, it was soldered, solder bridge or something. So, yeah, that's what you get if you don't clean up properly each time so I thought maybe I'll just do a quick uh, hookup and see what's going on so but the good thing here is that this chip doesn't seem to be that so let's try it let's try it on the monitor so uh, yeah I only have the black and white signal in there now it should be easy to get the color also and you may also wonder what kind of circuit this is um, it's actually the same as in the schematic for the modulator, and it's also the same parts as you can see. Unregulated, it's coming here into the collector, and the base of the transistor, the, the, that's the one that uh, steers the current, or tells how much current there will be, or voltage for that matter, and uh, that one is a senior diode for 7 volts, so and it has been pulled up to 12 volts, so um, through a re resistor, and it holds about 7 volts. And then, on the output, uh, is behind the di diode, uh, the the base emitter diode in the transistor, and that one also drops uh, about 1 volt. So then you have 6 volt, and then. <laughs> It's a bit strange, but if you see in the schematic again, you can see that uh, there's another... Uh, before the power is actually used. Um, first it is uh, put in these two tanks, and then 
before it is routed out to the devices that uses this power it has a di another diode and I think the reason for that is not to isolate anything reverse current maybe it can happen but anyway because you in the original um, design you had the transformers maybe they have some kickback or something <laughs> I don't know uh, anyway uh, that drops another volt so then you have 5 volt uh, on the output so uh, the 5 volt comes around here and here you have the luminosity input it goes down here so that's the oh, sorry for the mess here but uh, that's this one and uh, that's fed through a diode so it can only pull down so that's what the VIC chip like because you know the VIC chip is a NMOS transistor this is from the NMOS era where you only had one way transistors um, yeah the problem with the NMOS technology is that uh, once you get enough transistor in the chip then the static dissipation is so high that you can't have any more uh, transistors in there so the the <laughs> the complexity of the design has a limit because of this technology but then uh, when 8088 processor com came um, I think that was after this one because of the, the and that was CMOS not NMOS but CMOS and CMOS stand for complementary yes and I'll test it and um, this one is uh, seems to be okay let's plug it in oh by the way uh, <laughs> let's show you something interesting here so let's switch it on and, uh, Okay, this is not the interesting part but if I now uh, let me write poke okay I have written poke for a black screen and I press enter see that and there's still something on the screen and I think that's the text and now uh, let's take the I think it's the main screen, not just the border. Okay. There's another change. And now uh, let's clear it. There. Check that out. So let's go and poke 53280.5, for example. It's not great. Uh, that's interesting actually because um, this is the borders actually so this is the left side and now I have a color 5 and then there's black and the, and the right side of the border is high end. but you can see this high part here coming now and then and that I think that's the like the top of the screen uh, uh, it has the same colors as the side so I don't know okay Let's try it now. Enough talk. So let's try it. Oh, I was excited. <laughs> it looked okay on the scope though. So. Oh, there's the bars. That's good. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's working. <laughs> You're probably wondering where's the colors. Uh, that's because I haven't uh, hooked up the color signal here. So this is only for amplifying the Luma. And in the Commodore you have both Luma and Color. So, but the color signal is easy though. It's just, uh, it's uh, a bit less component. Yeah, about the bars. So you can see here. Let me focus. There. Uh, they are not that noticeable, but um, well, actually, I think they are worse now than before. I can experiment a little bit with uh, where I draw the power from and uh, yeah about grounding for example try different grounding points but uh, as you can see the the worst one is this white this bright so I, it looks like there's uh, something bright every for every character 
and uh, the reason for that is actually um, and the reason for that is uh, actually a signal calls AAC. Uh, it's not actually the signal's fault, but it's the signal from the VIC chip that tells the, um, the processor that you must free up the address bus so that the uh, VIC chip can use it. So the VIC chip uh, actually demands the address bus. So, so when this happens, uh, every other character or something like that so it happens very often and it happens in the face with a drawing of the screen as you can see so okay I've tried to capture the interference and the yellow line here is the luminosity signal and the IX signal is here the green one and also the IX signal is actually next to the lumen signals that makes sense though that there is interference so uh, you can see uh, I, it's a bit difficult for me to do this measurement because um, if I go below 500 millivolt per division air then uh, I can't uh, get the signal in because there's no AC coupling here so okay but anyway you can see that when the AC transitions, there seems to be some uh, something happening here. So uh, when it goes down, then it looks like the yellow one follows a little bit, and when it goes up, it follows a little bit and rings, perhaps, and so on. So, but <laughs> why not here? That's uh, kind of strange. Like, I don't know why. So. So there's not much to it, but it looks like it is enough. This is from a, this uh, theory about the IX signal was uh, from a um, from a forum. So um, yeah, I'll try that soon. So uh, and I'll let you know if it actually does help. If it, if it doesn't, then um, yeah, maybe it was bogus or maybe I did something wrong. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, and now I have. To I did also recap this board with new capacitors so, uh, because they were 30 years old and uh, they needed some new ones and uh, I don't know how good these are but this one is Siemens and the other there is Elna I don't know those brands, I hope they, uh, they are not fakes We're back in black and white